Good morning, EMEA, and welcome to today's webinar, uh, Powerful Monitoring and Analytics for Veeam Cloud and Service Providers. My name is Yuri, and I'm joined by Artyom, our Insight Cloud Solutions Architect. Please note that you are muted, but feel free to comment or ask questions by using the Q&A chat. The session is being recorded, and we will share the recording along with the slides after this webinar. Uh, we will also have a quick poll in the middle of the webinar and uh, an important survey right after. So stay tuned uh, until the very end. Your opinion is important for us. Uh, agenda. Uh, today we'll briefly touch the topic of market demand of managed services, and then I will hand it over to Artyom to speak about being one and the most useful reports and creative ways of using them. Uh, we will show how Veeam One alarms can help detect ransomware early, and we'll have a demonstration of dashboards you can build to have all crucial data visible. Speaking about market opportunity, uh, at first I wanted to share, I hope you, you had your breakfast, because I wanted to share with you a couple of pie diagrams, or rather uh, donut diagrams here. Uh, the result of data protection trends report made last year. Uh, where we learned that in two years there will be more customers who will finally start protecting their data, uh, their data about 15% more, and there will be an almost 20% increase in the number of companies who will outsource data protection to either managed service providers or to cloud service providers. And uh, that means that Veeam partners are in the right time, in the right place, and have access to the right products to be able to deliver that service. And uh, it's important to understand that Veeam is not only about backup. Monitoring and analytics is a big piece of Veeam uh, cloud data management platform. And today we will focus on Veeam One, uh, a product that provides a clear, unified visibility and control into usage, performance and operation of all your data, regardless of its location. And this is a single pane of glass to optimize your system and management compliance and service level agreements with ease. There are six main things you can do with Veeam One. Uh, monitoring reporting for Veeam Backup Replication, Veeam Agents for Linux, uh, Windows, Mac, and virtual environments. That provides you with valuable, valuable information uh, about your environment, highlighting potential problems before they operate, uh, before they impact your uh, operations. Capacity planning and forecasting gives you reliable threshold forecasts and provisioning recommendations that help you make well-informed decisions regarding the growth of your virtual infrastructure. Governance and compliance. Through monitoring and reporting views, you can ensure you're meeting your SLAs, RPOs, you, you get documentation on who, what, where, and configuration changes are being made. Uh, with proactive alerting, you can use a flexible system of customizable alarms, not to miss any events or underestimate alerts. Intelligent automation and diagnostics allows to automatically detect known issues in configuration and performance of backup infrastructure, and it enables Veeam One client to parse logs from Veeam Backup Replication Servers and trigger alarms with recommendations based on the results of log analysis. This is a very powerful tool our support team shared, and we embedded that into the product. Uh, this allows you to eliminate configuration issues without the necessity to address Veeam technical support saves both of us a lot of time. And last but not least, chargeback and billing functionality that helps you assess storage management costs and costs for virtual infrastructure users. So this information uh, provided in the reports can be used for financial analysis and billing. And jumping to the next slide, let's take a glance at uh, the product evolution timeline. So this product is almost 10 years old. We've been constantly adding new features and product integrations uh, over the past 10 years. And uh, now uh, let's dive into uh, Veeam One a little more. 
Uh, I'm going to hand it over to Artyom to talk us through where to find these gold nugget tools, reports, dashboards, and uh, how to benefit from them. And uh, feel free to ask any questions in the Q&A. Over to you, Artyom. Thank you. Thanks, Lazir. Thanks for introduction. Uh, the gate start. Thanks, guys, for joining us today. It's around 100 of us right now, and I believe more people will join later today. So let's kick off because we have a really huge amount of material to cover today, and I hope you will enjoy it and find a huge amount of you know, useful information for yourself as well. And frequently, we internally are hearing a lot of questions about benefits of VM1 comparing to say to different monitoring solutions yeah like NetJS, Virialize, you name it there are a huge amount of them and i personally agree because it's a reasonable question however it's not correct to compare vm1 to them because vm1 it's a really solid solution to look at your infrastructure mainly from the angle of data protection point of view yeah? nevertheless at the same time it's providing unique capabilities for the infrastructure vision as well and that's how we came to the idea, to this idea to make the session. However, before starting our 45 minute journey through almost unknown field of VM1, let's start with a very quick recap because I guess that we still have a lot of people uh, on the call who never seen it before, yeah, or just seen it briefly one time. So VM1 as a solution, it's a really comprehensive solution developed by um, Develop even for managing virtual infrastructure, for managing data protection environments, so on. It enables something that we call real-time monitoring at the same time with business documentation, with management reporting for all platforms across all VIM products. And we're developing it and we're growing it as well. And basically it consists of three core components that we are focused on. Yeah, it's VIM server, client, and web client. Plus data itself is stored obviously in the SQL database on the side. VM1 server is responsible for collecting data from virtual and VM backup replication servers. Keeping this data, storing this data in the database, you can think about VM1 server as a just an engine, as a brain of muscles of the product. VM1 client on the side are each a primary tool used for monitoring of your infrastructure as well, of virtual environment, of backup and replication infrastructure, so on. It's basically a .NET application that you're running on top of your Windows machine that gives you options to manage, view, to interact with alarms, uh, with monitoring data, to as well as if you need to analyze performance of virtual backup infrastructure components and so on. And it's really very it's extremely powerful tool. Yeah, and at the same time, it's pretty intuitive. That's why today we'll focus on a different part of the solution, because from our experience, 90% of customers who are using VM1, they are focused on the monitoring part, but we want to talk about something else. And this is something else, it's named VM1 Web Console. It's also well known as VM1 Reporter. Reporter, basically, it's a web-based application which provides you a set of dashboards, set of reports that allow you to verify configuration issues, that give you ability to optimize resource allocations and utilization. Uh, that it's a tool that gives you an option to track, implement the changes, plan capacity growth. There are a huge amount of things that integrated inside of their product. And from UI perspective, from the user perspective, it's as well, it's relatively simple. Yeah. You have just set of various dashboards which you can configure up to your test and up to your needs. And to be honest, those dashboards, they're really great. They give you all the details for the specific scenario. They're well suited to be streamed at the operation room or you know, just used as a monitoring coffee dashboard when you're coming on the Monday morning to the office and you're just running them. Besides that, inside of the product, you have a list of reports, long list of reports. And by long, I mean over 150 reports for all kinds of cases. Each of them consists of multiple configuration steps. On top of this, some reports can combine other reports, getting information and like aggregating it. Their reports can take share of all kinds of raw data and present it to you in a different scenario. They're really a long list of reports. 
And even internally, when we are ramping up new people, it's quite a challenge to explain how to work with this tool. And the common feeling is reports are boring and complex. And a few months ago, internally, we started to evaluate, reevaluate, sorry, where this feeling about boring, complex, and long list coming from. And we came to the idea yeah, that reporting is all about how fast you can get what you need. And that's what, what we found out. Yes, we have more than 150 various reports. More than 100 for them are just for VMware, VCD, and Cloud Connect. All of it just to provide you ultimate flexibility for various scenarios. However, 80% of them are extremely important, but only in some specific scenarios. That's making the entire thing a bit complex for day to day use. And day to day, I mean, you know, reports that you are using regularly, not just once per year. Let me clarify a bit what I mean by once per year. Yeah, just a quick spin off. On a parallel with running these webinars, working closely with our cloud service providers, I'm running our internal Vim demo lab. Uh, you can think about this demo lab as a playground for Vim engineers. And a few days ago, uh, I've realized that storage space on one of the repositories, actually it was uh, AWS S3 repository, uh, it's over, it's gone. Yeah, there was a limit of two terabytes per bucket and somehow we ended up at 2.1, don't ask how. And the regular consumption that we've seen before was less than 400 gigabytes. So it was obvious that there is some kind of issue. But it was almost impossible to understand using Vim backup replication itself, for which backup job or even restore point consumes such huge amount of storage space. Luckily, VM1 was connected to the server. So it took me really about two, three minutes to find a suitable report for that. I was not even reading documents. I was not even Googling. I just simply used the search box inside of the product and honestly saying, I was not even aware that there is this kind of report that can help me in this scenario. And magic, Oracle transaction backup went crazy and started to generate 10 gigabytes restore points per hour. Yeah, it's good as to one of our guys who decided to tune Oracle data generation script a bit, but that's another cool story. But this report gives me an appeal to find, to see the problem, yeah? We have the problem, that's the solution. And that's just one of the situations where Vim 1 came into play to simplify troubleshooting. There is a problem, and this tool helping you to fix it. In this case, there is usually no need even to read any kind of guide. But for everyday life, it's still almost impossible to dive through hundreds of reports trying to find what is suitable for you, right? That's why we decided to make a quick session sharing our visions and recommendations on how you can benefit from it in service provider world specifically. And actually this small idea in turns in something bigger, we'll discuss it later. And that's why we'll talk about today. That's what we'll talk about today. Yeah, the best, the ultimate way to organize reporter workspace, top suitable reports plus the hidden gems, and finally how you can build a service based on it. Now to be on the same page, let's make a quick poll, really quick one. Yeah. I just started, I believe you'll be able to see it and you'll be able to vote as well. Let's say we have one minute, yeah? What I'm curious is, how are you using VM1, VM1 in your environment right now, yeah? So I guess there are some cases when you don't even have VM1 and you're just like considering deploying VM1. Uh, maybe you inst it's installed, but you know, you're just like not using it or you're using it in very limited scope or using it only for internal infrastructure and mainly for monitoring. Or maybe you, you as well so mature that you're providing it as a service. Yeah. It's really interesting and important information for us just to understand the scope. Right. I can see people voting. Highly appreciate that. Let's give it 10 more seconds for everyone who is still thinking and trying to remember what is VM1 and what we are doing with that. Great. And five more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, done. All right, it's actually pretty interesting. Let me share with you what I see because it's kind of fine. 
so obviously around 40 percent of us yeah it's let's say around 40 people for the companies uh are not using it at all and don't even have it installed and that's really interesting and cool because you'll find a lot of interesting information today and i'll try to pitch a few points for you install but not really using it i believe you'll be kind of in the same team but there even what i'm really surprised and glad to see that there are like around 60 percent of companies who are providing it as a service to customers for customers that's really great guys and highly appreciate your time for the poll so let's deep dive and i'll try to uh change a bit on the fly the presentations for you need so everyone will be happy and will find something new for yourself that's great so let's go next then that's it yeah let's start the journey with the selected selection of reports you know top selection of reports the best that you can find in Vim one from almost 150 reports that I mentioned before, we've selected top 20. We've split them into four groups, and one group will have a two subgroups in, inside, you'll see it. It's still quite a lot, so I'll try to highlight only the most valuable parts and use cases for these parts. Uh, later on, you'll have link in the presentations. We've started as well a blog series and uh, where this information will be covered as well, but we'll touch it a bit later. And we'll start with evaluation part. Yeah, those guys are indispensable when you're just building the solution, and it can be something at your own data center, or it can be a new managed project at customer infrastructure. That doesn't matter. That will be suitable for both. And I'm not talking just about backup projects because, you know, it's something bigger. And one of the toughest requirements while building new projects is overall design schema. From my experience, eight out of 10 projects start slipping on the question, can you please share your current design details? Yeah. And there are multiple reasons why. The infrastructure overview visa report in a single click can generate perfectly detailed diagram of cluster, of host, of set of hosts, VM relationships inside, and all related information to that. Design the diagram that you can use later on in Visio and just like share or modify with your own needs. The best part that it accumulates lots of properties and containers directly from vSphere and Hyper-V. Yeah? Just enable property view in Visio and click on any object. And on the side, you will see a huge amount of information related to this specific object. When we first seen this, it was just like, you know, entering the Narnia door. We're just like, okay, that's the easiest way how we even can work internally with customers, not asking them to draw something in paint. I appreciate your paint skills, but still getting a nice diagram, it's ultimate in these cases. As well, you can open separate view for da data stores, including, for example, VM placement, uh, for networks with VLAN details. So all the network will be in front of you, storage configuration, and so on. Just click the small I button near the virtual infrastructure object and select the view and you will instantly jump on another page really nice and ultimate tool for professional services right for any kind of reports within or outside of BIM projects for any kind of RFPs you're working on and so on even for internal infrastructure just to have everything in front of you and be 100% sure how it's designed how it's working because that's one of the complications of uh, virtual infrastructure right there is no wire that you can track and you can check manually. And a quick tip, uh, to come back to home screen, again, click I on the top right corner and you will jump back to overview page. It was not obvious when we first time tried it. Next one, uh, VM configuration assessment. The one that which provides deep insight about virtual machines that uh, may have issues during backup process. It's extremely useful for just Initial assessment for managed service providers to get insights about tenant infrastructure. You can simply run it in customer on-prem environment and get list of potential issues. At the same time, when you're running infrastructure as a service, let's say you're running your own private cloud. Customers not always understand the consequences of their actions. They can deploy and configure VMs in a way it will be just impossible to back up. 
So the report could be also useful at one time or even periodic operations for IIS scenario itself. You know, so you can run it and see this kind of configuration that you will not be able to protect. And it's not just highlighting the problem. It shares with you all the recommendations how you can fix this problem. Yeah? Just run, implement, simple. Or you can contact customer and play an expert role saying that, guys, this design that you decided to use for your application, for your machine, it's not really supported. Let's tune it a bit. One of the best reports in product is backup infrastructure assessment. That's another one. Yeah? The report analyzes configuration of your virtual environment against really huge set of recommended baseline settings and different implementations. That's the answer for the question, is my infrastructure is according to best practice? Yeah? It can simply identify VMs that cannot be properly backed as well due to configuration limitations. It can verify problems area and help mitigate these issues completely. It's extremely useful as well when you're running initial installations uh, on tenant premises or for regular health checks as well. And a quick tip, if you click on the link in the criteria list, you can get full details about related warnings or errors. For example, if you go to VMware tool status, you go to the drill down for this thing. The good moment is if you're running it in IS infrastructure, it's almost almost per tenant visibility. Yeah? As tenant jobs uh, names inside VBR server, I use a specific name convention. Or you can do it yourself. Generally, there are around 17 metrics inside of this report, metrics or parameters yeah, that we are evaluating, uh, which providing deep analysis on their infrastructure configuration. And I hope it was a good enough for the warm-up yeah so let's move forward to the next biggest part visibility this one will be pretty huge uh, the core idea of any great report is ability to take data to analyze this data provide you another vision through the prism of this data yeah and that's the set of reports that we are talking about and we instantly jumping into a couple of reports that, that targeted on optimization because it's their great example of, for the case yeah how many VMs are provisioned? Uh, how many of them are actually working from what being provisioned? And by working, I mean, I don't mean, you know, just simply part on. That's not what to be interesting in. I mean, performing some tasks. Because there are dozens of scenarios when virtual machine was deployed at one moment, you know, for simple test, and then never been deleted because we've been too busy with other stuff. Or when it was simply forgotten during project the commission project because it was not very well documented and you never know that this VM X, 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 Y was part of this project. So you just like, it's still running in the background. Even sometimes amount of resources you can get back from this, from deletion of this VM, it's not huge. Idle VMs can dramatically increase attack surface of your, or even your customer's infrastructure. Because as far as they're running your infrastructure, they're not tracked, you're not updating them, right? So it's potential impact for the entire infrastructure. And keep in mind that in this one and many other reports, you can configure breakdown per VCD organization. Meaning that if it's used in your IS scenario where VCD is running, you can provide additional expertise for your customers or they can do it on their own. Yeah, we will cover this closer to the end of the session, just keep it in mind. If it's not VCD, there are some options how to use uh, business view policies, business view strategy to make this breakdown per customer as well. Next one, uh, obvious scenario for VM change rate estimation report is just running calculations for backup infrastructure, right? Taking into consideration depth of ransomware threat now, VM change rate is as well one of their instruments to pit finger on the pulse of your infrastructure. Now think about how it can detect, yeah? So you can try to catch malware, for example, using signature recognition. You can try to catch it using some kind of performer alarms using different software, yeah? However, sophisticated malware attack can happen under the radar of walls. It can be just tuned to be like that. So there will be no performance impact and signatures will be new and different, just a bit changed, right? But it's a bit more complicated to avoid change rate statistics because that's the target of the attack, yeah, to encrypt all the data. So this one, it can 
be a preventive method or uh, when you're just detecting that something the data is changing uh, or even the easy way to find when attack has started to happen so it will be just easy for you to find you know the last live clean point so you'll be able to see that the change rate goes crazy went crazy on the 9th of september and before that it was pretty clean so you can use the restore point from 8th of september simple tip here as well uh, that name of virtual machine or column graphs yeah they're clickable you simply can click both of them and get to the drill down report meaning you can get inside and check details for specific machine with history trend it's quite often that visual representation is just way better than pure numbers another quick tip here to get back clip this you know small back error that's in the red square right now it works for this one for other reports but as well from our practice it was not obvious and brings confusion sometimes so when you get into the inside of the drill down report and you want to go back to the main report this error will help you now about uh, vm growth report yeah. obviously from the name of the report it's a quick way to get trends of virtual machines in the infrastructure yeah. on another hand there's really limited scope for pure number or edit you know pure number of edit or removed virtual machines but if you will scroll down this report the hidden power of it is a simple way you can see who is the owner who is the de or deployer yeah of the virtual machine and what's more important at the same time who is the responsible for removal of this vm from infrastructure if it's been removed if it happened yeah and there are other ways you can get this information from vm1 yes sure there are other ways but it will be mixed with lots of other non-related data this one this report is the cleanest and honestly saying quickest way to get this data from and this moving us to the next subject of you know subsection of reports uh, which are useful for visibility and useful for control and if details about vm removal can be seen here for other objects let's move to the next one infrastructure changes audit think about again malicious admin who is leaving or who already left your company or mysterious loss of network switch or simple drs misconfiguration there are a lot of things yeah a lot of threats here what are your next steps how to find who is responsible for the mess and prevent it in future native vmware task and events they are not extremely friendly let's put it this way so here we go this report will show you all the details and even simplify the rollback to the previous configuration yeah? because you'll see all the changes who made the changes what was before and what is here right now as well quick note in case you're using the cloud director uh, most likely events in this sphere will be initiated by vcd user itself yeah by the service account that's how this sphere is built however you can still manually in case you see this alarm to this thread like go to vcd and check it manually there it's much easier sometimes to get it from this part and a good friend of previous report is backup objects uh, change tracking same idea same concept just for backup infrastructure audit now think about situation when your customer approaching you on the side yeah, and complaining that someone deleted a job a backup job of mine uh, what instruments you have right now to prove that it's not your mistake or maybe it's your mistake so how to find who is responsible for the show internally yeah, in your team and once again it's a perfect example of you know why not do you share the account to control vbr so you can use this report find all the details who removed it who did it find the guy and just like talk about that in addition to that if you're using self-service portal yeah there one the portal that uh, which is part of our enterprise manager solution that you're using to provide your customers access directly to their you know self-service backup uh, portal to create jobs to modify it as well so if you're using this portal using this report you can track actions performed by your tenants directly from the portal 
direction will be locked for account, as you can see here. Yeah, so kbbl slash admin is the account that this tenant is using to enter to the portal that he's using to enter to Enterprise Manager as well. So this action will be locked for account used to log in in self-service portal. This is the only way to get this information instead of reading logs, which is pretty long, boring, and you just have to pray that there's still this information. Yeah. Like. And for cases when more precise information is required, you can deep dive with job configuration change tracking report. This one will provide literally all the details about every change performed. Details including the backup server where this change was made, their change job, wizard page, property change, previously and new settings value, modification times, name of the user who made the changes all together. And as well, if the change was performed through service self-service portal by customer itself, it will be locked for account used to login in the self-service portal. So you have a proof that it was not you, this configuration was triggered by customer himself. And again, to recap, in Enterprise Manager, there is no this kind of uh, tracking ability. Yeah. And when additional layer of audit is required, uh, or again, there are just complaints from the customer, restore operator activity report, it's just a must, let's say. This report, uh, it just allows you to take to keep an eye on all types of restore actions performed across selected Veeam backup replication servers. It analyzes all guest files, uh, application level, and full VM restores activities performed by any authorized user and arranges this information by the type of performed restore action. And as well, again, it's tracking restores from any cold cell, including enterprise manager. So it can be even beneficial for customer in case they need some kind of audit and provide information about who made the restore and how this restore has been performed. Yeah. So it's ultimate and really, really important part. Okay, <clears throat> good part, uh, visibility section is over. Yeah? I actually thought it will take more time. Hope that you learned something new from it and liked it. Uh, let's not cool down and let's jump directly into what VM1 specifically is famous for. Yeah? And even when I joined VM like uh, seven years ago, this part was on top and it was obviously capacity planning, right? And just to be uh, according to our traditions, we'll start with this top one, yeah, capacity planning again. I'll not spend lots of time on it uh, because we still have even a demo inside of the se in, in the end of the session. But this one is one of the best and well-organized reports in the entire portfolio of reports. This report pack is designed to forecast when available virtual resources will reach the minimum level, when you'll be running out of resources. Useful internally and for on-premise standard management needs. It also provides great recommendations, really nice scoping and outstanding options during report generation. This spec provides at the same time some recommendations on resource allocation and load balancing to optimize, you know, to optimize the overall performance, to optimize the resource utilizations in your environment, and to avoid just like even possible bottlenecks. That's what we are really calling internally, get data, analyze this data, and report back on this data. Yeah. And it's even providing you know, some kind of recommendations about what you have to do. So it's really, it's really great part. And if you need more details on the running out of storage data store, for example, thing, yeah, you can just run over provision data store report. In addition to a simple number of days and recommendations, uh, by clicking number of days, you know, in the red square here, you can get the drill down view. What it will bring to you, it will list set of VMs, you know, list of VMs on the affected data store with storage space details. It can dramatically simplify the cleanup process for you. Yeah, how you approach in the cleanup. It can visualize which machines are there and which storage space is consumed. So take this data and use this data on your own. But the drill down as well hidden thing, but really important at the same time. And as far as we're talking about potential capacity, uh, there is one more tough question, specifically 
in service provider infrastructure. Yeah? How resilient our infrastructure, I mean your infrastructure is. Service provider environment, it's extremely impermanent, let's say, yeah? because of the simple reason, because of amount of number of users engaged into this infrastructure as well. At the same time, it's double impacted by any failure or maintenance because it's not only your infrastructure, but when, you impact, when this infrastructure is impacted, your customers got issues as well. So we have to be very accurate with it. So host failure modeling report allows you both to simulate just a simple failure of one or, or even more hosts. And at the same time, it can forecast CPU and memory usage for clusters in this situation. That gives you a quick answer on a simple but very important questions. How many hosts can be updated, for example, in parallel? Or do you need to provision additional hosts to increase overall redundancy? So not to be threatened when one of the hosts will be down and you're just like, oh, we don't know. Will this machine will be able to, you know, to power on running all the resources that we have? So at least, you know, you know the fact you know what you can do and you can raise the question and purchase additional equipment, for example, in your environment. And when you know limits of your capacity, the next obvious question is what I can do with it right now? What I can do with these limits and what I can do with this uh, infrastructure? Literally, how many more VMs can be provisioned? Uh, it's an obvious question. Yeah, it's one of them it's one more self-descriptive report yeah? how many more vms can be provisioned in my infrastructure the entire magic of this report is behind the scene you're just getting simple and straightforward number let's say 19 yeah that's the amount of vm that can be provisioned including current trends it's not just we are taking the infrastructure checking that okay this is the amount of resource let's say average size of virtual machine split one by another, yeah, divide and get the number. No, we're checking the trends. We're checking the trends of the growth. And the great thing that you can choose to run calculations with assumption that one host per cluster is in the maintenance mode, and you know, combine the power of the previous report and this one to find this number that say, yeah, this is what we can do right now with the current environment, but in case we'll have one host off, the number will be smaller. So it's even good for planning, you know, for planning of your business as well. And as I said, the entire magic is behind the scene. Yeah. Uh, but if you want additional details, you can just like simply click name of the object, like SP cluster here, and you'll get directly to the world of detailed trends and explanations about what's going on, some numbers, trends, how we get these details, and you can understand the error. So is there any kind of spikes right now going on and stuff like that? So as well, this power of like when you see the link in the report, all the time try to click it. Most likely there is kind of hidden Narnia behind this link. Uh, guest disk free space report as well. It's uh, showing you number of days till the moment uh, you'll reach specific threshold. For example, 90% of storage space. Yeah? And it's again, it's guest disk free space. Extremely useful everyday report that uh, provide you some insights per partition of virtual machine, not even for the entire virtual machine, but if you have multiple partitions, multiple partitions will be highlighted as well. Keep in mind that V1 is a solution that not requiring you to install any guest agent inside of them, any specific guest agent yeah, inside of the machine. So we're getting this information using our way, but you're getting this in guest visibility, which is great at the same time. And one more good tip here, if you click either on name of machine or column in the graph, again, you will get into details of the specific machine with some history trends. That's useful to understand, yeah? For example, if it's a daily growth and or some kind of anomaly or just day zero under provisioning. So this trend will give you an entire view because maybe we'll raise this alarm, we'll raise this flag saying that like, yeah, there is a guest disk free space uh, limitation. We're running out of space, but then you'll go and you'll see that, oh, there is a spike. And then you can deep dive to another report, checking that where the spike is came from, where this data be generated and when. So, and you can go back through the set of reports and find the reason. If it's a ransomware or if just like some kind of, you know, 
five terabyte file that's been moved from one location to another one called this growth, but you got this data, later on you can analyze and work with it. Last time I personally used this uh, report, actually it was uh, it was kind of simple issue, I'm honestly saying, but due to number of users in our uh, environment, all of them they use Microsoft Edge and the Edge cache started growing exponentially and the entire service almost stuck. So I got this report, checked, oh, okay, we got an issue there, came back to the server, cleaned the cache, started again, all good. Yeah. And Let's not forget about that Cloud Connect as well. Yeah, it's a massive part of the story. Uh, I want to just briefly touch a couple of related reports that I know that even if you've seen, maybe you've been a bit lost about how to use it and uh, what are the benefit of the reports as well. One of the issues when running Cloud Connect backup service, it's a uh, responsibility for a customer repository, right? There are frequent scenarios when customer even has not, ex they don't have any expertise to forecast amount of required storage space, or they just don't have time, or they're not caring about that. Safe point here that you have Cloud Connect user report. So even the summary overview provides great details about uh, highlighting, you know, days left uh, till tenants will reach allocated quota. However, more tenant specific details can be found on other pages. So let's go forward then. In most cases, yeah, uh, just subject for another report. In most cases, uh, when we are providing any kind of uh, updates uh, for the infrastructure, when service providers are running updates for infrastructure, it's a pretty general practice during Vim release to start update for the service provider and then update tenant infrastructure yeah, in Cloud Connect environment. At the same time, with some releases, legacy configuration of Vim backend replication can be dropped. Meaning if you will update to the version 11, the latest supported version will be 9.5 update for B for the tenant. In case he will go behind that 9.5 without any update, he will not be able to run backups to your infrastructure. And even if this version is supported, there are some limitations due to the you know, difference in capabilities between versions because not everything what's possible in 9.5 update 4 is possible in version 11 and vice versa. So tenant backup compatibility report is mostly useful during their running update of Cloud Connect server. Will all my tenants, will all your tenants still function after our update? Yeah, that's the question that you can ask yourself. Uh, are there any well-known compatibility issues? So to make the update smooth, just run this report, check version number, check version number to which you are updating, check if both are supported. You don't even have to, you know, to check it directly with the tenants, with the customers. So simple report, but providing really important visibility. There is no other way how you can get this information directly. Okay, uh, that was quite a marathon with reports. So if you survived up to this moment, round of applause to you. On a serious note, when we started uh, when we started to prepare this presentation, we realized that it's impossible to first fit everything in one hour, and second, it's just impossible for you to remember all of it in one hour as well. So the idea was just like to highlight a few things for you and to make to bring you some kind of interest. You just like okay, this one is cool, this one I want to try. In parallel with that, yeah, we started series of blog posts related to VM1 specifically in service provider environment, so no worries. Yeah, I highly recommend you to follow it after the session. Uh, I believe you'll even have a link in the follow-up. You can scan the QR code and go directly on just like uh, copy the, the link. Uh, at the moment, only first block was released, uh, but stay tuned, more and more coming with more and more sweet, sweet stuff inside, right? So uh, we are done with PowerPoint part. We still get around 15 minutes, which is great. Before we'll jump to Q&A session, let's switch for a quick uh, web client hidden games demo. Yeah, so I will not make a full run through the interface of the product. I highlight a couple of things because half of their auditory uh, don't even have Vim1 installed, so it will be good. But let's try to do it quick and efficient. Yeah. Let me start to log in. So as I said, Vim1 uh, is a web-based tool. 
right? It's web-based application, so to login in, I'll use my Active Directory account here, simple and straightforward. So, uh, what we have here, yeah? So, there are lots of, uh, not lots, but like quite quite few of different tabs here. So let's run one by one. So first of all, let's go first of all to reports. It will make more sense. So in the reports, we have two two tabs. Yeah, templates and saved reports. Uh, templates, it's a basic collection of reports uh, that are not prepared, let's say. It's structured at the same way. Yeah, it's all together in one place. Or there are some groups inside, but that's biggest confusion for users because when you see this huge amount of reports, the first question is just like, which one I need, how I can use it. However, you can simplify it. Yeah? You can just find reports that you're frequently using. For example, you know, reports that we've been discussing today. Go inside of this report, populate this report with some parameters that you want, click save, and save this report to a specific folder. Yeah. Now when you'll go to save the reports, you'll be able to easily find these reports in the specific folder. And you can create many categories for your own needs, for BCD reports, your internal reports, backup reports that you need. Yeah, it depends on your workflow, depends on your structure. Later in one of the blog posts uh, I've been talking about before, we'll share JSON with our favorite reports catalog. So what is JSON is? So you can easily take this folder of reports and export it. Yeah? So whatever report you like, you can export it and use it later. What we're planning to do, we're planning to create this kind of top selection of reports that will have lots of categories inside. So you'll be able to download it and import it directly. So we'll save you know, a few hours of your life. And what you'll get inside, you'll get a collection of these reports structured in a nice way. We're still working on the structure, still working on the set of reports. On the parameters inside, but it will be so simple for you, I believe. Yeah, just you'll download this JSON, import this JSON. In case you'll have a different vision or you would like to make a backup of this catalog, yeah, you can as well export it and create your own JSON part. So that's cool. So as you can see even here, yeah, everything that we discussed today, infrastructure overview, assessment, and stuff like that, they're structured in the same way. But again, stay tuned. Most likely we'll share additional information with you later on. Right. On another hand, oh, when you want to use it as additional service for your customers, first note, if allowed, tenant can log in using vSphere or VCD related uh, VCD credentials. Meaning, on the separate slide, yeah, I'll open in another in incognito mode, surely, set of VM1 web client. And I'm logging in using the account that actually I can use to log in directly to vCloud Director. If you're providing services to a customer using vSphere model, role-based access model, you can use this account here as well. We're logging in. And you'll be able to see yeah, that we logged in the restricted permission user. So that means that not everything is available for us. Not everything is visible for us. Right. We can see the entire set of reports. But again, imagine the customer who is just like logging into this as a new portal, as a new service. He lo he uh, hitting this kind of set of reports and he was just like oh okay there's just like 20 30 it's less than you have but still it's a huge amount of it's a mess you can a bit simplify for your customer the way they work with the set of reports so what you can do from your portal you can go and you can simply enable sharing to this report oh, let's come back here so take it share enable public access what will happen next the customer will see the reports that have been shared, that have been pre-populated by you. Yeah? He will be able to see it in his folder in all the reports. So all the reports that you decided, yeah, this report will be useful for you. So I'll generate, I'll pre-populate it with some numbers because maybe you don't even have expertise on that. They will be able to do it. And later on, they can just go to this one report, which is pre-populated, yeah? run preview, and generate that report for themselves. Or even run, you know, the uh, in a different scenario. So once again, keep in mind, if you're providing it as a service, you can generate for the customer this kind of public accessible reports and share access for them. That's a unique thing as well. Yeah. Another trick that you can use in the same scenario is a dashboard. 
and actually dashboards. Yeah. So when you're logging into the infrastructure, the first page where you'll end up with dashboards. So there's a huge amount of dashboards available for you as a service provider. And actually, part of them there, when you just deploy in their V1 in your infrastructure, they will be in this mode. Let me share with you. They are in the public access mode. Yeah. What does it mean for you? That means that this report that, for example, VMware Trends, which makes sense for you as a service provider, which provides you pretty important information about the growth, uh, storage used by the cluster, they can make no sense for the customer because they don't have access for the entire cluster. They don't have access to the entire set of data stores and so on. But the customer, when they will log in, they will be able to see these dashboards as well, which will a bit harm the entire experience because when they will log into this dashboard, there will be no data available because simply they don't have access to this data. Yeah, let me add more on the table. So how you can solve this issue for your customer? It's as well simply with this public feature. So all dashboards that you don't want the customer to see, you just go share and removing public access, all right? So in my case, I have two. So for those two, I'll just like remove it. Then what you can do, you can generate dashboard for your customer like this one yeah and put inside only widgets and widget you can put when you create the dashboard there's a small thing new widget here there's a huge set of widgets that you can configure and use yeah it will add widget by widget but let's say you've pre-configured it you've set up what you need vms uptime wasted resources for their tenant infrastructure types for virtual machines inside of the tenant infrastructure as well and top issues by day some numbers Top growing disk space as well, yeah, that can be useful without any, even generating the report. You can just check it right here. Some counters and more and more will come, yeah, so we're working on that. So you create in this dashboard, you go into this dashboard saying share public access, and then all customers who will be in scope of this dashboard. So that means that even you can generate, you know, some. Uh, dashboards individually for a specific customer with some specific parameters required for their need. This dashboard will become visible for this specific tenant. Looks how cool it is. Yeah, so the tenant will log in to the web portal, will see this dashboard, say, okay, click this one. We'll wait a bit while the data will be generated. Sometimes for the tenant, it can take a while. Let's wait a bit, yeah? And he will be able to see all the details about the resources available for this tenant, about errors, about what's going on in the infrastructure and so on. Yeah, all the counters and so on. It's really so cool as well when we first time seeing this because there's some information that you're not able to get even through report directly. It can be visible only as a dashboard here. I'm just clicking it, making, getting all the details, all the information. It's a really cool thing. Yeah, so that's it. What the tenant will see, what the tenant will get from you, yeah? They're logging in using their vCloud director account or their vSphere role-based access account inside. They're getting access to the dashboard. Simple one, one click, open the dashboard that they can just, you know, stream in their operations room or just like any kind of IT manager can log in periodically and check what's going on. Inside of this dashboard, when needed, yeah, they can simply go and deep dive to the full report that will redirect them to a specific folder where they can just like check what's going on, run the report, get the entire set of information in the PDF view or whatever view they will prefer and get all these details. So it will be really smooth experience for the customer. Yeah. And as far as we have still like a few moments of time, uh, one more report, class of report that we're not covered today, but at the same time, they're extremely useful, extremely powerful. And that's one of the reasons why we didn't cover them because it will take one hour slot to cover them. Yeah, it's custom report and, in, uh, sorry, it's the wrong, the wrong one. Custom reports, yeah, where you got all the infrastructure and you have one of the things called report builder. Report builder, it's ultimate tool when you need multiple you know, data from different reports gathered all together in one infrastructure. So let's say you can take information about idle VMs with a summary. You can get information about undersized VMs with the summary information as well, and put it all together and create one report that will contain information for both. 
that's sometimes useful when you're trying to generate reports automatically. And just for the record here, you can do this in VM1. You can build reports and generate them periodically so that you'll get them in infrastructure. Yeah, so you can get idle VMs, wasted storage, total VMs, what amount of undersized VMs, and if you have any kind of crossing in between. So for me, it's simple. There are no, nothing here, but keep in mind that you can do this as well. So uh, that's it. Uh, that's all what we wanted to show you from the UI perspective. I hope that uh, you found something new for yourself. There is one more topic that we discussed uh, internally and decided to highlight, yeah? REST API. And you know that there are two minutes left, so I believe you guessed it will not cover the entire topic. So as you know, starting with V11, REST API for VM1 became available. Yeah? And during the last update, V11A of VM Backup Replication, additional endpoints have been introduced to VM1 API. And we even moved webinar a couple of times to align with updated REST API, to align with their new update, hoping to show you some tricks based on this thing. Yeah. However, after the release, we've run multiple tests and had to commit that REST API, it's still in what we call preview mode. Yeah. So it's not production ready, meaning that you can use it, but from our perspective, uh, we still don't have all the API that we need to show you really powerful uh, scenarios, how to use it, what kind of data you can get inside. There are, still, there are a lot of cases right now, but still we want to wait a bit. That said, we are waiting, we're still waiting for the next major release, V12, where REST API finally will be moved to the from preview to the GA to global availability mode. So stay tuned and we'll touch it, we'll cover it later on. So I see that we are running out of time. So it's a great thing, a great moment to maybe to get into the QA in case we have any questions. Let me check and uh Ivan, maybe if you've seen Ivan was helping us in the background. If you've got any questions that you think we should publicly discuss, just unmute yourself uh, and well, mm -hmm. all questions are answered, so yeah, we will publish the, in the follow-up the Q&A. Oh, that's I think good. you can Great see job. a raised hand from Rasmus, which has been raised for 11 minutes. Rasmus, can you can you type your question in the Q&A chat if you have one? Yeah, and also I think it's worth mentioning, you know, the integration with Service Prior Console. Probably you can say a couple of words about that, Artem. Uh, yeah, 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 for sure. For sure, for sure. Yeah, that, that, that's, good. that's a good point. That starting from the last update, we simplify, greatly simplify the way how you can report on the usage for different products. And it's not only for VM1, it's actually for the entire portfolio. So what being implemented in Service Provider Console, as you know, yeah, Service Provider Console, it's the one-stop shop for service providers. If you're providing any kind of service in your infrastructure, literally any kind of service, it's highly recommended to deploy Service Provider Console in your environment just because it will simplify reporting it will simplify management of customers huge amount of things and what we've been introduced in version 6 in the last update of service provider console is the way how you can report for usage so you can simply connect vm1 to service provider console and all the reporting will be done through one single place because before that for each and every product you get 10 installations of vm1 you have to make 10 reports for individual VM1 installation, yeah, which sometimes it's not really handful. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good catch. We have a question from Rasmus. Uh, is it possible to send a scheduled report out of the scheduled time? Scheduled report out of the scheduled time. And I see time. Ivan responded, yes, you can. And a uh, link to help send. Yeah, that's good. Thanks, Thanks Ivan. Ivan. Yeah, also uh, a question I was asked um, not long time ago about licensing. Uh, some licenses of end-user v1 do not integrate with other types of end-user licenses like Perpetual and VUL, but service providers have exclusive opportunity to in, which integrates any rental v1 license and any rental v1 can monitor any VBR installation, whether it's end-user Perpetual, end-user rental or end-user subscription. Yeah, I agree. So feel, feel free to reach your mm -hmm. partner manager's request a, a trial license to test to try it yourself and see if it fits your business. Okay, let's wait one more minute for maybe any other questions. Yeah, we'll there is up. another question from Rasmus. Uh, my question was maybe not accurate. I mean, sometimes we have seen a report not being sent. Uh, 
can I send one on demand instead of creating a review and saving that? Uh, yes, 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 for sure. It's, it's not a problem. You can generate the report. You can even do it simple way. You can generate the report and just like send it directly from the UI or you can generate the report, download it as PDF attachment, attach it and send it to the specific customer if needed. Okay, cool. And thanks for joining guys. Uh, upon leaving, you'll see our uh, quick survey Please complete and uh, I wish you could say happy Friday and happy the rest of the week but well let's, let's soldier on have a nice day then yeah and one 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 more sent from my side as well so I will highly appreciate guys in case you will fill this survey because it will help us on providing you additional information deep in dive to the subject that you're interested in yeah again thank you it was a pleasure and see you later goodbye bye